Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. On this show today, we are doing another comic of the month. And this is coming from all the comics that we read in April. James? Yes. Um, we Basically what we do is, w- when we have time, we read a lot of comics. And it's probably not good for us, but we do it anyway. Yes. And we we want to talk to you guys about them. We want to let you know what our favourites were, what stood out. Um uh, Last month, we obviously spoke about... Um, the double issue of Batman 18 and 19, both yeah. by Tom King. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes. And I didn't really want to talk about what came after that, but I feel like I have to because it's a completely different story. Yes. So I'm going to just go out there, but we won't. it's not going to be about Batman. It's actually The Flash. Yeah, and before we get into it, spoilers, if you've not read the comics, as soon as we mention the title... Feel free to skip, or if you want, then listen in. You know. Yeah, listen in. We'll tell you what we think and stuff like that. Yep, no bother. And so, James, mm-hmm. your comic of the month was Flash issue twenty one. It was indeed. And following up from Batman issue twenty one. Yeah, the this is part two of the button. Yes. Uh, part one was obviously Batman twenty one. So, The Flash, The Button, Part 2, um, scripted by Joshua Williamson, and the art was by Howard Porter. Genuinely, this is such a shock, because I don't read The Flash often. I'm not a big Flash fan, but uh, this book was, um, this tie-in has proven to be quite interesting, so obviously, coming off the back of you know, the Bane story arc, Batman's still yeah. continuing, but he's investigating the button. If you don't know what the button is, the button is basically the comedian's button yeah. from the Watchmen. Basically, go back and read DC Rebirth issue one. That gives everything to what's happening in the universe in DC right now. So, uh, there's a lot of, well, there's not really a lot of backstory. It's just that one issue it has been left to this point, which is kind of refreshing that it wasn't right into, which kind of makes it look as if Batman's can been kind of looking into this slowly over time. Yeah, over time he's been trying to figure out what the button is, and the button is the trademark Watchmen logo, the the yellow smiley face with the blood. Yeah. And in this book, in the first, in the sort of first part with Batman, um, it's Batman saying that something happened when he put the button next to Psycho Pirate's mask. So he tells the Flash, and as he tells the Flash... The reverse flash comes in. The reverse flash comes in and basically kicks the shit. Not even a minute, wasn't wasn't it? It was probably 45 seconds of just the reverse flash kicking fuck out of Bruce Wayne. But then Batman also getting a little bit here and there. Again, you know? it's Batman. You can't see Batman get his cunt kicked in. That's just, no, that's just no cricket. Of course Batman has to fight back and he puts up a fair fight, but he does, he does let's be fair, if anything, his pride was not hurt because he fought back and he did get a few good punches in. When the Flash, just before the Flash arrives, Reverse Flash goes away. and Well, he picks up the button, which yeah, uh, picks up th- the which did have a reaction with uh, Psycho Pirate's mask. So that kind of set off, like a, I don't know, like a an echo or a, almost like a window to another universe where... Bruce saw uh, Flashpoint Batman, which is his dad. So there is obviously some kind of cosmic significance, power in this button for whatever reason. And when Reverse Flash picked up, he zoomed away, or it just, whoop, popped away. He he zoomed away, and then I'm pretty sure just that as soon as he zooms away, the Flash zooms in. No, 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 no. What happened was he popped in of reality, he popped out of reality almost. And then he popped back in within seconds, I imagine, and starts basically burning to death by bu- in, in blue flame, bu- which is quite a common thing in the major tie-ins to the Rebirth uh, story. This blue flame is appearing at the Superman arcs and stuff where people are going missing, like, uh, was it not Pandora? As well, Pandora yeah. uh, was encompassed in blue flame, so that's kind of like a 
it's all connecting together. Or there is this higher being that's controlling everything that's caused the DC heroes to miss five to I think it's five to ten years of their history, and also why have they done that? So this is kind of interesting, and let's just go out and say it. It's Doctor Manhattan. It's got to be. It's not been confirmed who it is, but, but if you're if you're getting if you're putting a Watchmen tie in with a button and there's something relevant about this button, then people just all of a sudden start coming up in blue flames and dying, being bumped to the bone, like we know flesh left on their body. It's Doctor Manhattan, Aye. right? Doctor Manhattan. If you've not paid attention to Watchmen, is he? He is. He Omnipotent. Is, he is the definitive definition of God. Yeah. He is all knowing. He is all doing. He is all seeing. He is all everything. That is Doctor Manhattan, and Doctor Manhattan can make you erupt into a big pile of mush and blue flame. So we want to see Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, I think they will eventually get to this, but let's dive right into the issue, James. So we'll dive into The Flash. Um, the Flash continues right after. So The Flash has appeared and he sees Reverse Flash pretty much dead. He's dead. He He's pretty much just bone by this yeah. point. Bone in costume. And he kind of recaps the events of what's happened in Batman, if yeah. you hadn't kind of read it. So, effectively what happens is it's the Flash giving this sort of internal monologue, trying to, he's telling you who the reverse Flash is, telling you what has kind of happened and what that history is. A lot of history being re-brought up, you know, like, it's like there's a relevance to everything that's going on and you need to know it as a reader. So, naturally, the next scenes after that are Batman lying in bed. He's pretty fucked. Yeah, the amount of bandages and stuff he's got on really shows that <laughs> Reverse Flash gave him an absolute doing. And it was also quite refreshing to see this because you never really see it in Batman comics, at least. Uh, Bruce getting patched up. Well, you don't see them as much now, well, not, I've not, noticed. Not so much patched up to this extent. Yeah. I mean, this this is what we expected after the Bane arc. Yeah. But uh, this apparently re- Reverse Flash done a bigger number on him <laughs> than Bane did. So, you know... What nots. But it comes into a conversation with Bruce Wayne and The Flash talking about what is the deal with this button. You said there was something wrong with this button. Like it reacted to Psycho Pirate's mask. What is going on? And Bruce is kind of being a bit dodgy about it. But eventually kind of gets into the point of revealing that he's seen his dad. Yeah. Seen his dad's ghost through it. Or in that kind of level. So... Then we kind of find the Flash going out on his own to try and figure out what's going on. So he goes to the Justice League Watchtower and he's sort of, again, a lot of this is internal monologue. Yeah. A lot of this is the Flash telling the story from his perspective and about how, you know, when he was before the Justice League, he was a nobody and, you know, needed friends and stuff like that, that kind of thing. So this is very much from his perspective and it's... I'll, it's good because if you want to know, get an idea of who the Flash is as a character, this is a good book to do it because you get a bit of everything. Yeah, so what happens in the closing scenes with Flash going on his own, it's a case of he wants to know what's happened. He's wanting to see what happened to Reverse Flash. So he goes and gets out of the Justice League Watchtower, the Cosmic Treadmill, which is Possibly the most stupid sounding powerful item in history. Like, take it this the way. Infinity Gauntlet co- looks badass, you know, a big gauntlet with the infinity gems. But a cosmic treadmill, a treadmill that's cosmic, a treadmill that takes you back through time, forward in time. Look, I'll have is you know, right? <laughs> fitness doesn't stop at human at humanity, right? <laughs> fitness is all Fitness is everything, right? I, I completely agree. <laughs> cosmic a, 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 a cosmic treadmill. But th- this is a Flash's thing. It's the cosmic treadmill and stuff. So it's very... <laughs> what? <laughs> just, I just, Wait, just my change of tone? No, I just can't grasp cosmic treadmill. Who who was coming up with that? Like, I'm sure we'll dig it up in future episodes <laughs> for uh, the creator of it, James. But, the uh, cosmic treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> 
to be fair, it's not the first time I've heard of the Cosmic oh, Treadmill. Oh, of course, of course. It's so funny to have it re- like to bring it back up again. The Cosmic fucking Treadmill. I need one of them. The Cosmic Treadmill, which is just a stupid, stupid thing. But as he's about to go off and do his own shtick, Batman appears, who's clearly still recovering, and Batman's saying, no, I'm, I'm tagging along with you. So he ties... It gets as it, as much as I love this uh, arc right now. This gets a little bit stupid. It gets a batarang, ties it round the cosmic treadmill, and holds on. Like Monty, fuck. Is the cosmic like, treadmill? I'm sure. I'm sure it he could like grapple something on with his belt to secure himself. But now he's relying on his strength. His strength's probably diminished after his fight with Reverse Flash. Let's be honest. Like, look at him. He's done in. He's fucking done. And he's like, oh, no, I'm going to hold on. So as Flash is taking the cosmic treadmill on a wee uh, trip in the past to see what happened, something happens and just fucking destroys it. But then it's th- they reappear in the Batcave. So we, we you're, kind, th- you're kind of at first thinking like, oh, Bruce mentions oh, th- this is uh, the cave. I can tell it from anywhere. Uh, also, well, it's uh, this is this is my first setup that I had. Well, wait a wee minute, we forgot something. What? When they're going through the the oh yes 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 treadmill run, the history that has been lost flashes up in little panels. Yeah. And one of those really disturbing scenes is, which I assume the Flash from Crisis. Oh yeah, Earth, it will be when he ran so fast to stop the Crisis of Infinite Earths that he became dust. <laughs> like, yep. That is a very... I don't know if that's a red herring. It feels to me like it is. It probably is, because... Or maybe th- it's... Throughout the New 52 and... Uh, Flashpoint New 52 and Rebirth, Flash is a very prominent character with dealing with a button in Rebirth issue 1, and now this. This is, this is DC's big story going forward. There's no lie about it. So... To try and go, oh, this is Flash's fate down the line. Well, let's be honest, he'll kill off everybody and bring them back down the line. But to, to try and kill off uh, the Flash again with another story this big, who knows? It could happen. It's interesting, especially with how this story builds up. And yeah, so after, you know, they get to the Bat Cave. Yeah. What happens, Mario? We see a, uh, another Batman. T- a tear of my. It's Flashpoint Batman, Bruce's da. Like, see if you've read the fallout from Flashpoint, with Bruce getting that letter, his da, saying, "No, oh, I'm so proud of you and stuff." And oh, I'm going to tear up now about it. Anyway, but uh, it's no, it's gut wrenching. So I can only imagine in Batman fifty, uh, Batman issue twenty two, that is out this week, James. Yep. Which falls on with part three is going to be an absolute ball buster. It is Bruce Wayne teaming up with Thomas Wayne from the alternative yes. reality, and it's it's going to be good. It's going to be so. I like this book. James, I, I really like where it's gone. I'll, I'll get an eight. An eight? Wow. I'll get an eight on the basis that the Flash is a bit stupid. The Flash's yeah, yeah. cosmic treadmill bit was just too stupid. Uh, that that's the thing. That's his power item to travel in time. You know. But then again... Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking stupid thing. But, you know, it is what it is. So, I I get an eight. I, g- I give it a seven. There's a couple of things that I don't like about it. The artwork's brilliant. Um, that is but beautiful. But I prefer the Batman side it to yeah. the Flash side it. It's yeah. like the Batman side gets more attention for some reason. Yep. It's Batman. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking where it's going. I hope to see Dr. Manhattan. Hopefully. I don't think we'll get to see him in the end of this arc, but... Even something, even just that big fucking weird thing in his forehead. I'm off of that. Yeah, well, we'll see, won't we? We will. Anyway, so what have you been reading? Yeah, my comic of the month, James, is Secret Empire Issue Zero. Secret Empire? Yes, that was That would have em- been mine if you never fucking took it. Well, James, you took Batman Issue 19 last month. So I'm t- I had to take 18 last month. So... It's my turn to be the dick, all mm. right? Oh, Mario, I'm going to be a dick. Anyway, please, yes. Secret Empire, please. Yes, written by Nick Spencer and Daniel Acuna. 
Yes. 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 There we go. Got went off on a good start. That, oh, that without your iPad, you have incredible. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up and check it, James. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I can confirm that it's correct. And yeah. Uh yeah, the story for this, it's it's a big bumper issue. That's what I love. Something worthwhile, like a big heavy story. It's a heavy hitter. Oh, oh the the issue it, alone. It is non stop. Every single section is just absolutely incredible. Like you've got the first part where Cap goes. Uh, up a snowy mountain top to I think it's the origins of Hydra and they reveal that the allies have created a cosmic cube and they're going to rewrite history basically them winning the war which is a kind of cool thing sexy, I like it basically Cap has to go in this pool that will retain his memories of Hydra and everything on it and that's why well basically everything happens and then right from there we get one of the one of the sickest looking Captain Americas I've ever seen. As in physically impressive, sick. I don't think he's looked this impressive since Rob Liefeld draw uh, drew him with a massive chest. Like like there's veins coming out his arms, he looks in no like mood to be fucked with. This is like the Captain America that you should fear, that villain should fear, but unfortunately, he's a villain, which is actually causing quite a bit of a stir. Uh, recently, Marvel coming out going, "Oh, hold on, just, just, just wait." The Captain America Hydra thing, just wait until the end, wait until you read it all, which is a fucking cop out. If if they're going down a route that I think they're going, which everyone will by the end of this, Captain America will return to his former self his of big red white red blue white yes. wankery self. Yes. Like this is but, but this is a thing like this is refreshing. Like Superior Spider Man was was refreshing. Like I loved Superior. Like it was a good take on Spider Man. Dan Slott got a lot of shit for it. And Marvel and Nick Spencer and the people behind it are getting a lot of shit and I don't agree with that. This is a character that's been around for, well, over 70 years. For people to say it's anti-Semitism is just ridiculous. It's a, it's a fictional fucking character. It's not as if... It, what are they going to do for every movie? Like, American History X, it's got uh, neo-Nazis stuff in it. Are people going, oh, blah, blah, raging with that? They probably did it when it came out. But it was a relevant story that had knock-on effects. It's a, it's a fucking fictional character. My argument, right? My whole argument, right? It's a fucking book. It's, it's a, fantasy. It, c- comic books are glorified art books that tell stories, right? And they do it very it, well. It says it in the fucking thing. Graphic novel. Graphic pictures. Novel. Reading. All I'm saying is art is art. If you don't do art, you can have your opinion of it, but don't be overly critical of it because at the end of the day, art is art. You know, people, you know, it's like you say, you know, you can't eat, how, how many times do you want somebody to reinvent the wheel? Yes, before exactly. you get pissed off with the same wheel over yeah. and over again? And right? people going, oh, that's just that story for that character rewritten for this character. See, at the end of the day, see if they rebooted the MCU with this story. I'm sold for the start. I, I would I'd be fucking sold. Because I'm just like, Captain America, he's or, always been a good guy in these. Or, or even days. better yet, something down the line, say a Captain America 4. Boom! They twist that in. They twist this story in that he's been an agent of Hydra. This this story is like a knife in my heart, and it's just been twisted and twisted and twisted. Because, like I say, I don't. I like Captain America as a character. I've read some of his books. He's always been the same. Yeah. Which is fine because a lot of these characters are the same. Yeah. But see, when you give Captain America an overbearing flaw, which currently this book does. Yeah. And let me tell you. This book takes all the trust that we, we as readers have in him, we as viewers have in him, and all the characters in the books have in him, and he fucking stabs everybody in the back. He should oh. get an award for Oh, he doesn't even stab them in the back. He stabs them in the fucking chest. He might as well... He deserves an award for how many people he fucked yes. in this book. Right? He deserves an award for that. Because yes. That, that was... It, it, it gives you an idea of who Hydra are. People who lie in wait for years. You build, the slow they build, build. your trust. They build your trust. And Snake into every single part of S.H.I.E.L.D. to set this up. And want to know what's even better? It's 
the revelation in front of Sharn that uh, like he tells all the Hydra, like, hold your fire, I'm your supreme leader. And she's like, what? And he's like, don't worry, they'll take care of you. And I, then you've got one Hydra agent coming up, just going, uh, like, he, he's like, oh my god, I've been, tr- I've been trained my whole life to uh, hate and kill you, and and now you're 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 my leader. Like that is absolutely beautiful, showing that someone, well, two people that are enemies are actually allies all all along. It's unexpected. It's one of the unexpected twists. Now this book. For what I read of it, it was fantastic. Like it was just action, start to finish, and Captain America's at the helm of the drama before the big revelation, and it's utter genius how it's done because you're so mesmerized by all the action. Like you know, the Chitari are coming. Yes, they are. They are coming in waves and yeah. droves. The Guardians of the Galaxy are there. Captain Marvel's there. Any hero you can think of, the Defenders, the Guardians, the Avengers, you think of them, they're there and they're defending Earth. And literally, there's just this beautiful scene of Captain America giving one of his speeches. If we are going to fall today, we'll fall together. Yeah. You know, up and he doesn't even need to say that because he knows what's happening. Oh, hi. But he's gone, go on, go on, you know, keep fighting. He's, in, he's inspiring, that's the thing. Like, this he's is inspiring them to this, die. Hi, this is absolutely beautiful because this is 16 issues of Captain America in the build. This is what this was. I'm going to say right for the echo, I didn't buy the Captain America issue one but then when the shot came out that oh he's an agent hydra i was like oh oh oh, 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 i need to see this i need to see how this happened and in over 16 issues it's just been building and building and building small things getting shown in like there's a shatari queen or a queen on earth so that's why they're coming in waves they're coming to get the queen no one knows why captain america's planning this the Red Skull having Xavier's brain, that was part of the plan, which came in the downfall of Uncanny Avengers. Uh, then, which Captain America, America was, well, you didn't see it, but it was implied that he killed Red Skull. Mm-hmm. So, he's slowly taking over Hydra piece by piece. He's pushing out people who are seen as inferior in dishonouring the Hydra name like Red Skull and everybody's trusting him and this absolute fucking betrayal to it each felt real. each one it was beautiful it was it showed the strategic mind of Captain America put to his full potential and then just oh sorry but it's how it's how good it is right this is this is arguably like I'll be honest one of the best books Marvel's put out period yeah right it is so good because, like I say, they take a character that we all know has never been bad, will never be bad in yeah. his life, and see if see if that twist never came out. See if people didn't have such a fucking uproar about it. I would never have heard that he was an yeah. agent of Hydra. That would have shocked yeah. me. Do you know what I mean? That would have genuinely shocked me. But what the fuck are they doing? And I probably would have acted like Hoffman yeah. did. But at the end of the day, I would have grew on it because I like my villains. Yeah. And now I've got one of the... the one of the best human beings in comic book history who's good in his heart just turned. Yeah, but this is the thing. It's not of his own accord. It was done by a cosmic cube. It so, is, but it's still, so it's still know, happening. I know, it's but that, it's, it's the thing where on the Captain America, America issues, you had flashbacks to Steve's alternate past where he's been raised in, by Hydra. Those are nice, but you, you know Steve's origins. In this... It's not even a betrayal to the Avengers and everyone that he screws over piece by piece. This is an absolute stab in the fucking heart of Captain America. I don't see how coming out of the end of Secret Empire, Steve Rogers being Captain America. I can see him hanging up the shield or it's either going to break him or it's going to encourage him to just annihilate everything to do with Hydra. There's no other way that this is going to come out. Two two this options, Marvel. That's it. For the first book, see for this first issue, which was a bumper issue, as you say. It was it's issue zero, so you it's, know, it's the, the kind of giveaway one. That'll so much action, so much beautiful. But the whole thing is a Captain America piece. Yes. You know, that whole scene, just before he, he tells them, just before he stabs every, them, every one of them collectively in the back, he gives that inspiring speech. 
you know, Avengers, Defenders, Guardians, whatever, defend Earth, and if we die, we die. And people are putting up the fight. People are people are putting up the fight. People are dying. Oh, aye. People are people are actually dying in this book. People being swallowed by Jatari, yes, like Jatari monsters. People being like stabbed and punched, and it's just it's mental. But it's it's this bit where he looks the cosmic superhuman. Oh, aye, type. outside Earth with a shield. He he sends them out to defend Earth while they get a shield up, and when he puts the shield up, he refuses to put it back down. And that is just that's the start of the betrayal, right? That is the indefinite betrayal, right? Oh, aye. He's he's basically sentenced the guardians and everybody up there to death. Yeah. If they can't get out of there, because the Chitari are coming, and there's absolutely fuck all they can do. That is hard. That is so hard to watch because I'm just sitting there like I really for the first time reading the book I'm like I don't know what's going to happen. Aye. I don't. And then Zemo with the spell book which we did see in Captain America. I can't remember the issue. He's opened up a dark force dimension kind of portal to see off New York, where all the super villains just appeared to to, c- to cause <laughs> a ruckus to get all the street level heroes there. That sealed them off. Now the only ones that I kind of think are f- uh, free from that is Iron Man and Iron Heart, which is yeah. Riri Williams. Because they were on the helicarrier. No, no, they weren't on the he- uh, helicarrier. They were. Trying to get the they were shield to get the back shield up. up, but they were on the helicopter. I'm sure. Uh, well, they were flying away, and they were actually Aye. saying, By "Everyone, this is all a distraction. You need to get to Washington." Which at this point, Hydra have all the helicarriers, and they are over Washington DC, and that's the end of the comic. Which, in three simple steps, Captain America's fucked over America. Fucked over the world, mate. Aye. <laughs> like, fucked over his pals. Fucked over America. Fucked over the world. Do you know something? This 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 was a good book. I I'm gonna say I'm going with a ten, mate. Perfect ten. Uh, there's there's nothing wrong with this comic. The artwork is beautiful. What something I want to comment on on the artwork is Captain America's costume. The upper uh, chest piece is so much darker blue than the rest of it. It's almost like black, which just goes, hold on, aren't vil- villains supposed to be wearing black? Guys, you should have fucking seen it coming. You've no one to blame for y- but yourself, S.H.I.E.L.D. Aye, if you can't tell a cunt by what he's wearing, you're the bastard and you deserve everything you get. Aye, that's exactly the analogy to Aye. Mario. <laughs> if that's how you view people, you're a fucking Aye. monster. How do you think I'm? A- I wear black all the time. I'm wearing black right now. Exactly. Cunt. <laughs> anyway. So... so I get. I, I'll get. I, I, I think I could be persuaded to get a ten. I really liked it. There's, it's just action start to yeah. finish, and there is a lot of dialogue, a lot of talk. But there is a lot of slow see, build to it with see, all the Captain America. Just but it's see worth that it. inspirational speech he gives about just fight to the last breath and die, and then just stabs him in the back. That is, that is, villainage all over. And I, he might know. He, he doesn't mean it because it's not him. But oh my fuck, oh that was good. Anyway, that's enough about yes. that. Yes, James. Last month you chose a throwback graphic novel for our comic section. I did. This month, it was down to me. Yeah. I'm the prima donna. I get all the wishes granted. And I chose Lock and Motherfucking Key. Good Which isn't actually by title. It's just Lock and Key. But it's that badass. Good choice. Well, you kind of have to say it, you know. It's Lovecraftian beauty. That's the only... that, that It is... It's Lovecraftian beauty. It's a dark, twisted sort of horror novella. You could look at it like that. It's very different. Yep. Very much not read a comic like it. But Mario has some lovely details for you. Yeah. Uh, the book, well, the series, it's over six hardbacks. Uh, six graphic novels, sorry. Because I like my backs hard. <laughs> <laughs> Another pun for James there. Uh, it was written by Joe Hill, and the artists are Gabriel Rodriguez. Rodriguez? I can't talk today. Rodriguez. And uh, colorist J Photos. Hmm. And I'm just going to say right for the get go, this is such an amazing graphic. Like, even, even the first volume, which we're going to have a little scan over for 
anyone interested. It starts off pretty grim. Like I was going to say, it's it's a it's a graphic that you could almost like recommend to kids, but it's actually pretty graphic to be honest. Uh, with the two lead characters, Kinsey and oh sorry, three three kids. You've got you've got your three kids. Hold on, Randall, Kinsey, and Tyler. They basically witnessed their dad being murdered and they go off and come back to this little like kind of island and from there it's just almost like a a comic book version of the Goonies but with a little kind of supernatural edge twist to it. Yeah, it's, it does come across like that. It's It's very much like it, 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 is, it is dark. It is very grim. Yeah. You know, you... And you have to kind of be in, you know, your mood for horror to really get into it because, as you say, there are six of these in volume form. And the team have always kind of stuck the same. You know, they, they've... For the start, yeah, I think they've consist- always had it's consistent. Idea. It's consistent, so you know that, you know, you're in safe hands because you're with the people that have basically done it from the start. And... That's a big deal for me. Right? Yeah. I, I like long-running teams who know what they're doing and have a plan. Yeah, and something where I start middle and an end that's not going to stop halfway and then leave you hanging like some series. This is beautiful. Yeah, and it's it's so different for so many comics. I mean, it has flavour. It's got a wee bit of flavour of, like, you know, your preacher or your crossed, you know, that sort yeah. of dark, gritty story. Not as dark as crossed, though. Not as dark as Crossed, but this is the novice. You read this before you go into Crossed. <laughs> if you want to brace yourself. <laughs> um, but aye, that's the, the way you're describing it. It's, it, it's, it. it can be put on par with that. This isn't like your Avengers story. Do you know aye. What I mean? Definitely not. And Lock and Key tells quite it's a sad story. It is. It's, it's absolutely gotten The family, after the death of the dad, move away to this little island, away from everything and it's a slow, slow descent. Like, you see things like the mother resorting to alcohol and stuff. Obviously, the death of her husband and having to look after the kids but on herself. And it's it's so gut-wrenching, but at the same time, it's also very fun. You've got Tyler discovering a magical key. This is what the entire series is about. It's these magic keys doing different abilities. In the first volume, we're witness to the ghost key. We are indeed. It's The keys are quite strange because when used, they grant certain abilities. Abilities, if you will. And from what I'm recalling, mm-hmm. but from what I'm getting from it, so they they use the ability of being ghosts to kind of peer out yeah. into the lives of other people. To d- what wh- what would you do if you had invisibility? Basically, that's this is where it gets fun because it's childish. It's kids doing kiddy things. Yeah, and I like that because they're like, oh my god, we've got powers, but they don't understand the potential ramifications of having these powers, which is where the story. Just when you think, well, this is quite fun. This is quite tame. This is quite. This breaks up the monotony, and then you're just like, oh, wait, <laughs> back to the grim nature of things. This isn't fun. Like, there's a lot of fun moments in it where Tyler, d- uh, who's discovered the key, uh, goes, oh, look, I can turn into a ghost. And then he's just, like, walks through the doorway after turning the key, and he'll be lying there, like, rigor mortis, like, eh. So the other, uh, his other siblings are like, oh, stop playing around and whatever, and he... It's not until they see and do the stuff that they actually believe in, which is which gets tied into later volumes. That it's almost like it's almost like uh, Neverland. Like if you're an adult, you don't believe this. Yeah. In anything, there's uh, I think it's volume two. There's a head key where you can put the key in your skull open up your head and take things out, your fears, your, maybe, your intelligence, and then put 
other things in, which at one point uh, the mother sees this and she's like, oh, stop playing around with Bode's head or something. And, and it's just like, hold, hold on, how can you see this and not see anything? She's like, drunk, she's, Mario. Like. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's also that element of it's for kids, which I love this book. As grim and dark as it is, it's for kids. And what you've got at the end, you've got someone called Dodge stuck in a well who tries to convince Tyler to let him out with the well key and stuff, which no one really knows where it is and stuff. And all I'm going to say is it. This is a slow build. Over six volumes, it is. It's got a. It's got a it series of unfortunate events vibe, but yeah. not quite as childish or over the top as the series of unfortunate events. It's quite grounded, and there's real themes. You know, with the mum suffering from alcoholism, death, how these kids handle this, and their way of dealing with it is doing things that they really shouldn't be yeah. doing, right? And naturally, these things escalate into worse things, like you say letting Dodge out of the well. Yeah. X, Y, and Z. You know, and it's, it's just asking for trouble. And it's like you said, that scene with the mum, you know, the mum's negligence because she's so drunk. Well, oh. it's not even negligence or drunk. It's also this thing of you have to be, like, young to understand. Like, you have to kind of believe in magic almost. It's very much built on the imagination. And the, the end of the story, the killer had a friend... Of the dad, like oh. one of one of them died and one of them got away. Well, got put in prison. Dodge has been helping this boy escape the prison and stuff through water, which is a part of the well. Being stuck in the well, you have this ability, but it's also a curse. You're stuck, and also bring well using uh, the this ability. Dodge is able to bring this boy to the island to try and release him to to release her that's almost a spoiler anyway fuck you this is a spoiler <laughs> show so uh, Dodge does this has this huge plan to get released from the well but ends up coming out the well and throwing this guy through the door with the ghost key so everyone thinks oh he's dead but his body's been taken away and he's this ghost stuck around the mansion. So these two elements, Dodge who wants this black key, you don't really find out until maybe I think the fourth volume in what what this really is and what the the entire thing of the keys is. And then you've got this ghost who kind of wants to come back but is very, in two ways, he's been coerced to help Dodge but also wants revenge on Dodge for having killed him and that's where volume 1 ends off which is a great place to start for a new series, It's like I said it's 6 volumes, it's got a start middle and an end, it's perfect picking up and reading it any time it is grim but it's also got as much fun I, as it I is I would definitely say I would, I would honestly definitely say that, yeah, it's got that series of unfortunate events thing. The wee bit of Crossed and a wee bit of Preacher. Just tiny bits. Mm. Just tiny bits. No too much, because Preacher I was going to say Cross is very, very, very dark. But if to kind of elaborate, that it's quite grim. Yes. Right. <coughs> but I would probably say more of a series of unfortunate events, would yeah. you agree? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. Aye. But uh, I quite like it. I yeah. think it's cool. Uh, uh, as you say, it's made for kids. But yeah. I've never seen a kid read it. Ah, <laughs> <Like laughs> oh, kids don't read comic books. Uh, that's for that's for adults. adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would uh, for volume one. It, it it's a lot of information to take in. I think the later volumes, Tame it, it it's a little bit easier to understand all the stuff that's happening. So I would say volume one would get an eight. This is an Eisner award winning title as well. As last time. Maybe we, this should just be the Eisner Award section, James. No. <laughs> no? Because I, I much prefer to hate on things than to love them. Ah. Uh, but I'm fair. I'm fair. But I, I do like Lock and Key. Uh, I would like to read more of it when I have the time. I would probably, yeah, I would probably rate this probably a seven. Seven. 
I think that it, it's good, but like you say, there's a lot of stuff happening, and that might deter readers away because yeah. people are like. Well, what it, is, it is quite a pretty Cause decent might, graphic. Because people might be sitting there going, "What the fuck? I've got to learn three Wayne's names and remember that they're that, and they're mad an alcoholic, and what are, these, what are these keys? Like, do you know what I mean? P- people might read it and go like that, but it's fun. It's grim and it's fun. If you like grim and fun, that's fine. If you like supernatural, you'll probably like it. Yeah, yeah. Aye, I'd probably go that far. That's it. That's the end of the show. You know, yep. comic of the month, 40 April. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Let us know what you think. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. So please, you know, let us know what you think. Let us know how we can improve. And geek, geek out. out.